Minecraft has over a thousand different blocks, but not all of them are super useful. So today I'm gonna show you the most useful blocks in Minecraft and all of their unique features. Starting off with the dispenser, I bet you know that he can shoot out fireworks and arrows. But did you know that they can also shoot out snowballs, potions, eggs, fire charges and even bottles of enchanting. It can also be used to place water, lava and powdered snow. Which can be really useful to automate your farms like the creeper farm with the water dispensers. The dispensers can also place down boats and minecarts, including any type of minecart. And yes, even those minecarts. Dispensers will equip armor, elytras and heads, but not only for yourself, but it can also equip the same stuff onto villagers, zombies, skeletons, zombified piglins and armor stands. A villager with a dragon head is a really funny view. If that didn't surprise you, it can even use the shears to harvest the wool from sheep and also remove the pumpkin from the snow golem. Last but not least, you can use it to ignite TNT, nether portals and anything that's in the way of it. After the dispenser we have the lodestone, which basically is a waypoint in Minecraft. To use the lodestone, just simply place it near your base and right click it with a compass and voila! Now the compass will point in the direction of your base or anywhere where you place your lodestone. But it also works in all of the other dimensions, even in the nether, where the compass usually doesn't work. This means that with lodestone it's basically impossible to get lost in Minecraft. Next up we have walls, a great building block but also super useful to send a vertical redstone signal. Just build three walls next to each other and place an observer right under the middle wall. Now just tower up as much as you want. And to send the signal, just place a block touching the middle wall. And in an instant, the signal will be sent down and received as you can see. Now we have trap doors and I'm gonna show you a trick that you probably didn't know. Just find a flat area and place the trap doors as the outer walls of the area. And open them like I do. Now if you can lure some mobs into the area and just walk out, as you can see they can walk in but they can't get out and you just made a one way fence. There are a lot of uses for leaves, mobs don't spawn on these blocks but they can be even used to transfer redstone signal. When placing down the leaves with an observer at the end of it, it can send a signal by just placing a log. I used it to fill up a tree with TNT so whoever decides to chop it down will get a little surprise. Next up the powdered snow, it's pretty useful as a trap, a temporary building block and you can use it to prevent fall damage and it can be even used in the nether, so basically like a MHG water bucket replacement but for the nether. But it gets even better, the powdered snow won't melt or despawn in the nether, so whatever you build it won't disappear. Lanterns are mostly used to light up places but there's even a way to see under the lava with them. This works the best if you're in the middle of the lava lake, then build a bridge one block higher than the lava. Drink your potion and jump into it. Place your lantern hanging under the bridge. And to make it work, just place a temporary block under the lantern and break it. When getting under the lantern, you will be able to see everything. A really unique way to find some gold or even ancient debris. After that we have the shulker boxes. Everybody knows that they can carry a bunch of stuff but they can also be used as a secret door entrance. You have to place the shulker box under a 2 block height place and dig out the blocks under the shulker. When you want to enter the place, just go on top of the shulker and open it. And done! You will drop right in. There is a really good use for sand and gravel. You probably know that this can be used to remove lava or water, but there is another use. When placing TNT underwater, followed by sand or gravel and then just detonating the TNT, it will still explode. I always use this to get into the ocean monument rather than just mining into it and wasting a lot of time. Mushrooms. Makes for a very delicious mushroom soup, but another use is with the end portal frames. Go to your end portal and place a dirt block exactly one block away from the portal frames. Then place your mushroom and bone meal it. After a few tries it will grow and your end portal frames will be gone. You can even do this on all of the sides. The magma blocks are useful for bubble elevators, killing mobs in your farms, but also helpful when starting in Minecraft. Everybody knows that it's difficult to stay underwater for long periods of time. 
but if you bring armor blocks then you will have no problem. It helps you breathe and also for your own safety the armor blocks will give damage to anyone standing on it. Continuing on with the ice block, a super useful block when it comes to filling up areas with water. Start by placing the ice in a pattern like this and then break them, causing the water to instantly fill the whole area. Unlike the water bucket, the ice blocks are stackable, which means they are way easier to carry around. We have another very similar block, which is the packed ice and the blue ice. This ice can be used to ride on with your boat and reach huge speeds. And with packed ice, it is 40 blocks per second, and with blue ice, it can get up to 72 blocks per second. If you use that in the nether, your speed could be up to 580 blocks per second in the overworld. Now let's take a look at soul sand, a bad block if being in the wrong place, but the best when used right. It can make for a bubble elevator to lift you and your items. And if your boots have soul speed 3 enchantment, then running in the nether will be much easier. But did you know that simply starting to run on the edge of the soul sand will keep the effect as long as there is a path going forward. Carrying on with the ancient debris, other than giving you netherite, it doesn't explode and can be moved by pistons, which makes it incredibly useful for mining pores so that they won't blow up. But now the glazed terracottas, the most artistic blocks in the game, each one having a different pattern, like the lime glazed terracotta, which has a minecart design on it. But my personal favorite, the purple glazed terracotta, which has a cool looking sword design and four of them put together will make for a pirate ship wheel. Next up the pointed dripstone, a really sharp block to protect your base, but it can also be used to farm lava. Placing a lava above the dripstone will start making it drip lava. And to harvest, you must leave a cauldron under the dripstone. After that we have chest, which can hold items, but actually it serves another useful feature, it can line up the items. Last year we built a piglin partnering farm that produces a lot of items, and the chest here is a really important part that helps up align all the items for the sorting system. Continuing on with the glass, a clear block that is used in almost every minecraft house, but the uniqueness about this is that no mob can spawn on it. So covering something will make it more proof. You can even cover the whole end island which looks super cool but keeps the island in a classic shape. But actually any block can be a useful block when you're trying to prevent damage from a TNT. If you place a block between you and the TNT, the damage will be reduced by a lot which might save your life. Let me know what do you think is the most useful block in Minecraft and thanks for watching. See ya!